Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks on Roku Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Longtime subscribers know that these days I'm a skeptic of Adrian Broner. I was surprised at the betting line for the broner Paulie Malinaji fight. Malinaji indeed went the distance in that fight. In the crowd was Floyd Mayweather. In my opinion, Mayweather is the smartest man in the sport, right? I believe that for all of Floyd's, you know, talents, uh, hand speed, foot speed, elusiveness, spectacular defense for everything Floyd does. I personally believe, looking at Mayweather's fights, that what Floyd does best is think. He just has a better understanding of the sport, right? Well, a lot's been made of a possible fight between Floyd Mayweather and Adrian Broner. Fans want to see the best fight other very talented fighters, right? But if you go back, as longtime subscribers know, and if you look at a video where I name some guys who I wanted to see against Floyd, I did not name Adrian Broner, right? With regard to the Paulie Malinaji fight, I thought Malinaji was undervalued. I told viewers before that fight to take the over and to sprinkle some money on Malinaji to win the fight at greater than seven to one odds. Right? That bet should have worked out for gamblers. Well, let's talk about why Adrian Broner's hand speed and quick reflexes doesn't translate into him being able to fight at a fast pace. He can't. Right? Let me point out that at 147, let's focus at 147 just momentarily. Not only would I take Floyd Mayweather over Adrian Broner, I would take Devin Alexander over Adrian Broner. Understand that guys who can move and who can keep busy in slow rounds and win the slow rounds would give Adrian Broner all kinds of problems. Adrian Broner has power. He just doesn't have mobile power. The difference between he and Floyd is that while I believe both guys throw excellent left hooks, right? Excellent left hooks. Take a look at Floyd's fight against Juan Manuel Marquez, where Floyd lands that left hook, drops Marquez. While both guys can throw excellent left hooks, and while both guys are very accurate, and I mean very accurate, right? In my opinion, Adrian Broner's straight right hand doesn't compare in the slightest to Floyd Mayweather's right hand. Take a look at how Mayweather drops Victor Ortiz with the right hand. Look at how hurt Victor is getting off the canvas. I know Ortiz wasn't prepared for the punch, but the point is the punch had mustard on it. Also keep in mind, Mayweather can throw that straight right hand to the body. That right hand is keeping you busy up top and down low. And he's accurate with that right hand. In the Guerrero fight, he's able to stand Guerrero up several times with that straight right hand. Adrian Broner, in my opinion, doesn't have the kind of straight right hand that can hurt you from distance, right? So as you're fighting Adrian Broner, he's coming in, he has a shoulder raised, he's hitting you with left hooks. I believe Broner has to get really close to you, like this, to hit you with a right uppercut, whereas Mayweather's different. Mayweather can be back here. 
You know about the left hook. You're prepared for the left hook. And by the way, of course, Mayweather throws excellent left hooks to the body and to the head. But Mayweather can then lean in and hit you with a straight right from way out. So even against a fighter who knows how to fight law, like the ghost, Robert Guerrero, right? Guerrero's a southpaw. He's coming in. He's throwing a long jab, right? He's not crouched over. He's using length. He's back here. Even against Robert Guerrero, Mayweather was able to get around the jab and hit him in the face, hit him in the body with that right hand. That part of Adrian Broner's game, in my opinion, is missing. Let me point out, Mayweather said that Broner's a bit flat-footed, right? Broner, to me, doesn't bend at the knees enough. He doesn't move around the ring enough. And that impacts everything. Let me give you a great example. Let's shift for a moment to the NFL. You know, I'm an equal opportunity gambler, right? Tom Brady's a great quarterback. Tom Brady's a definite future Hall of Famer, right? Tom Brady reads defenses with the best of them. He's accurate. He's had some of the highest quarterback ratings in history. He's had some of the best statistical years in history, right? This is a guy who's efficient. This is a guy who, you know, throws for a lot of touchdowns and has had a lot of success, right? But Tom Brady, outside the pocket, on the move, as great as he is, simply isn't Aaron Rodgers. Sorry, Patriot fans, right? There's a part of Aaron Rodgers' game where Aaron Rodgers, you know, fades back, the pocket breaks down, Rodgers is on the run. Now, just picture if you're a defensive lineman. If Brady's on the run out the pocket, you know Brady has to set his feet to throw the ball down the field. So as long as Brady's feet are not set, you don't have to worry about Brady getting off some pass 30 yards downfield. But you don't have that luxury against Aaron Rodgers. These days, let me just say this too, you don't have that luxury against Seattle's Russell Wilson, right? These guys aren't running quarterbacks. These guys are Fran Tarkington move in the pocket quarterbacks. So when Aaron Rodgers gets out the pocket and you're a defensive lineman, you have to try to chase him down. Because whatever is going on with Aaron Rodgers' feet, you know Aaron Rodgers can turn and throw the ball 30 yards downfield with accuracy. Right? He can hurt you on the move from distance. Right? Tom Brady, as great as he is, teams know they can rush three guys. Right? They can rush four guys. They don't have to bring an army, right? A lineman can kind of figure out when Tom Brady is going to throw the football. You don't know that with Aaron Rodgers. So by the end of the game, linemen are going to be more tired trying to chase down Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson than they are Tom Brady, right? In fact, New England prides itself on a quick offense. Right? Brady gets rid of the ball quickly. With Aaron Rodgers, he's holding on to the ball. He gets sacked a lot because he's holding on to the ball, running around and taking chances. But he's always dangerous. You understand that his ability to be accurate on the move is something that you need to always be alert for. Now, Floyd Mayweather is always accurate when he's on the move, right? Let me point out the first two rounds against 
Robert Guerrero. Look at the tape. I understand in the post-fight interviews, Guerrero was saying, yeah, I know Floyd did a lot of running. You know what? Floyd didn't run at all those first two rounds. Didn't run at all those first two rounds. He's standing right in front of Robert Guerrero. And he's disarming Robert Guerrero. Floyd is the elite chess player in the sport. By chess, I mean, you know, you do this, I do that. You do this, I do that. You know, stand, dissect, destroy. Right? Floyd's the elite chess player in the sport. But once Floyd figured out that when he started moving, Guerrero had no answers. Floyd was able to move around the ring, keep Guerrero guessing. He made Guerrero look flat-footed. Well, guess what? Adrian Broner is Robert Guerrero. Right? You know, the same problems that Robert Guerrero had against Floyd Mayweather, Adrian Broner would have against Floyd Mayweather, right? Guerrero is an elite fighter. He's elite, right? But he was just too flat-footed for Floyd Mayweather, far too flat-footed, right? Whereas, you know, how do you put it? Adrian Broner against Paulie Malignaggi was also too flat-footed. Understand, when you're flat-footed, a guy like a Malinaji is able to stay outside for rounds. He's able to survive, right? He's able to rest. He's not worn out because he understood that as he was outside of Adrian Broner, there wasn't the possibility that Broner was going to be able to get out of his shell, leap forward and do any damage. Not only that, he knew that if he stayed just far enough away from Adrian Broner, all Broner would be able to hit him with to hurt him was that lead left hook. With Floyd, you don't know that. That lead left hook is dangerous, but also that right hand can hit you like a drum, right? Let's also talk about Floyd and Adrian Broner for a second because they're totally different fighters when it comes to foot speed and mobility. Young Floyd moved more than he does now. He was mobile. He moved around the ring. You didn't know where Floyd was going to be in the ring, right? He moved. Adrian Broner is young right now. He's in his early 20s right now. You know where Adrian Broner is going to be in the ring. He doesn't move like Floyd. He's not as fluid as Floyd. He's not as mobile as Floyd. Quite frankly, today, today, with Floyd Mayweather being in his mid-30s and Adrian Broner being in his early 20s, Adrian Broner is not as mobile as Floyd. Right? Let me point out, too, that the mobility part of the sport is a major part. It's very hard to change because you have to change your center of gravity. Also, the way you pace yourself has a lot to do with your mobility, right? The guys who move around the ring are prepared to move around the ring for 12 rounds because they understand that if they move for seven rounds and run out of gas in the eighth round, they're going to be in trouble. So the movers have literally built up stamina through the years, right? Floyd Mayweather, and keep in mind, Mayweather is what I call a switch. If he wants to move, he can move. A lot of times he just wants to hang out by the ropes and save his energy, right? But the point is movement is a strategic option for him. I don't believe it is for Adrian Broner. If Broner started moving around the ring like Malinaji, he'd probably run out of gas in 12 rounds, right? Let's face it, too. Movers have thought through things because it takes a lot to be able to move and to still have power, right? You have to be pre-wired for it. Let's talk NBA for a second. Right, I'm going to hit a bunch of sports here. Let's talk NBA for a second. 
right? It's just like three-point shooters where, you know, amateurs need to set up to shoot the three. We've had several great three-point shooters in college not be able to make the transition to the pros because in the pros, guys aren't going to stand around and watch you set up to take that three. There's going to be a hand in your face. Right now, those guys are very different than the quick release guys who can shoot that three in a rainstorm, right? Ray Allen, the end of game six, NBA Finals, doesn't even have to look down with the game on the line. Gets the ball from Chris Bosh, just takes a step back, dudes on him. Ray Allen gets the shot off. Right? If you're in the Bay Area, you know all about Del Curry's kid, Stephen Curry. Right? Stephen Curry just has to touch the ball in a spot that he likes. He can get that three off with all kind of people around him. Right? The concentration's there. The release is a quick release. Right? Now, Adrian Broner is interesting. The question isn't whether he has the hand speed up close, he does. He has blistering hand speed. The question is whether he can move to a new location. If he has the mobility to run, come and get you, and still have power, still have coordination when he's on the move. Right. There was a lot of talking in this Paulie Malignaggi fight. Right. Um, you know, Adrian Broner was yelling to Paulie Malignaggi, you can't hit me and stuff like that. You know, Malignaggi should have yelled back, you can't hit me either. Right. First off, Malignaggi's throwing combinations and touching Adrian Broner. If you don't believe that, just look at the CompuBox numbers. Right. Um, so I have to wonder about the greatness of Adrian Broner's defense. But more importantly, while Broner's talking to Malinaji, he's not hitting Malinaji. Right? My point to you is for Adrian Broner to be as good as he's rated, he's going to have to be able to close the distance better between him and his opponent. It sounds simple, it's complicated because Broner likes to sprout roots on the canvas. He has his legs too far apart to be able to kind of move with you. So here you have that contradiction. The guy with the quick reflexes and the fast hands who can't, in my opinion, fight at a fast pace. I take Devin Alexander over Adrian Broner at 147, and I'd certainly take Floyd Mayweather over Adrian Broner at 147. Let me go one step further. Some of the criticisms that I'm leveling against Adrian Broner, believe it or not, also apply to Saul Alvarez. You know, I think we're going to be surprised at how he cannot match the pace that Floyd Mayweather lays down in that fight. If you go back and if you look at the Robert Guerrero fight, Floyd really wins that fight on pacing and accuracy, right? Guerrero is just not prepared. He's too flat-footed to deal with Mayweather, who is moving along the ropes, moving around the ring, then hitting him with straight right hands, right? Pacing is undervalued in boxing. I don't think Broner is mobile enough to hang with some of the guys out there. Let me also say this too. Kel Brook is a mobile fighter with mobile power. It's possible to walk down Kel Brook. Carson Jones came close to doing just that. But I'm not sure if Adrian Broner would be able to walk down Kel Brook. In other words, Broner, after the fight, said, I'm willing to fight anybody. Adrian, here's a suggestion. Fight Devin Alexander. 
fight Cal Brook. As an aside, by the way, Cal Brook is unbeaten right now. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by. Take a look on, at us on Roku, too. Thanks.